Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Man, it is a chilly one. As expected, it is nearing winter. As crazy as that sounds, it feels like this year has gone so fast. Yeah, we are into the official cooler temperatures. I'm not sure how many more uh, 90 plus degree days we're going to get out here, but it is California, so you never know. Yeah, today's forecast, to give you an idea, right now it's about 37 degrees out. We got a high of 56. It's going to be in the low 50s majority of the morning. That said, it does look like it'll be a beautiful day out on the California Delta. That is where we're heading today and to get this video started I wanted to go over the bait selections that I have for today's day of fishing of course we are dealing with some cooler water temps some fall temps maybe even some early winter conditions and that's gonna significantly change my bait selection my arsenal for a day out on the water now if you saw last video we were fishing with mr. Obity Williams out on the Delta and uh, had a lot of success on a jerk bait and a crankbait and not getting bit on our usual punch or frog or topwater stuff so that indicated to me that today will probably be similar you never know I still do have a frog and punch but uh, I've got some other baits in the mix that I think will suit these cold conditions a little bit better let's just dive into it real quick bait number one is our old staple the Delta cheater jig good little bait if we find some hard bottom possibly some wood not sure if this will come into play but have it just in case Bait number two, bait we had a lot of success with last time, the old jerk bait. This is a Stunna in the Phenom color, shallow diving jerk bait. So we'll definitely have that on deck. Bait number three, and this was the uh, so-called winner last trip, and that was a square bill, or a square bull, I should say, 5.5. It's got some green pumpkin, a little orange, brown in it. Really just a good crawfish imitator. Could be even a bluegill imitator too, but this was definitely the bait that caught the most fish last time out on the Delta. So I think that'll probably be a big player today as well. Number four, you know, last time we were catching some striper, some bass. They were hitting uh, the jerkbait and the crankbait, so I figured it would be a good time to tie on a smaller glide bait. We've got an S waiver here. A lot of bait fish in the system right now as well, so I don't think that would be a bad choice at all. Number five, even though this wasn't something that was getting bit at all, and I'm not even sure if it's going to be a pattern, so we've got a frog. This is a popping frog. Yeah, I'm thinking some deep Thule Islands, something like that, where you really just can't present anything else. This would be a perfect choice, and hey, you never know. One day these fish might be biting crankbaits and jerkbaits. Today there could be a frog, but you just don't know. So we got a frog. On a similar note, our next rod that did not get bit whatsoever, and I know that O did a lot of this last time without any luck, but it's a punch setup, so one and a half ounce weight. There's still some dense vegetation out there that we could punch. They just didn't seem to be relating or at least biting under that last time, but again, something you just cannot rule out, so we'll have the punch with us. Number seven, we are going with a topwater, something that we'll throw primarily in the morning, but you never know, midday we could throw this as well. We've got some higher tides this morning and some low light conditions, of course, so this could be a factor. Yeah, it's just one of those baits, you never know. Could be on, could be off, but you definitely want to have it just in case. Rod number eight, yeah, I know, eight rods already, <laughs> but we've got a Flash X with a little tiny swim bait trailer on there. Again, something just a little bit more finessey, maybe a little bit more applicable to the cold water conditions. Today, if nothing else is working, something a little downsized with a smaller blade and a smaller boot tail. We shall see. And last but not least, definitely a cold water bait. This is a Berkeley Power Blade, Colorado and a Willow Leaf Blade with a power stinger on the back. It's got some gold, got some white in it. Something you definitely want to have in the arsenal this time of year. This might be the bait that gets our bigger bites if we happen to connect. Ooh. So what's that? Nine rods? Nine rods out on the Delta today. I know we have a lot of rods today. We are going a little bit lighter. We took the graph off. I took the big battery out from underneath the seat. Barely packed the old tackle trunk. So I've kind of downsized the kayak, make it a little bit lighter. Again, like I mentioned, California Delta, it's cold out, it's chilly, but there always seems to be a way or a pattern or an area that you can catch them out there. We're gonna get loaded up and put a day out on the water and see what we can figure out. So that's the video for today, guys. Let's see what happens. Alrighty folks, let's get her started. Oh my god, even though it's cold, it's chilly. What a beautiful, gorgeous morning. I just cannot beat this, I'm telling you. I think we'll start with a jig. We've got some tide movement today, but overall it's a pretty high tide. We're not at any low of lows. 
so we'll have a lot of water to work with which I kind of like this time of year and I think a lot of our targets will be around points current breaks inside of islands and that's really just kind of utilizing the information that I had last time when O and I fished and we've got our confidence baits today of course what they'll be biting I have no idea but that's why you bring a bunch of stuff and try a bunch of stuff figure out that pattern I have a suspicion as to what they'll be biting but again you just never know you never know First cast with a crankbait. Well, that was a nice little hint you gave us. Thank you, sir. You know, this is one of the baits we figured would work today. I'd say that's a good sign, first cast. Yeah, skunk out of the boat. Right where he's supposed to be. It's a cranking deal. Yep, those sharp hooks pay off right there. See? Jeez. Yeah, maybe a keeper, probably not, but number two on the crankbait. You're getting bit, that's good. Cause you know how these cold days can be. Sometimes it just completely shuts the fish off. Other days, a little bite, you just gotta have that specific bait. And they're biting the crankbait, which is good. So I bet you they'll bite the jerkbait. And as it warms up, I mean, maybe other things will come into play. But I think that's a relatively good sign. Three on the old cranky. Another dink. Look at that. You can see the little dinks biting right there. Now the, uh, the hardest part about the day will be figuring out how to catch the better quality fish. Those two plus pounders. That is something that, I don't know, I don't know if it's bait specific. You can play the numbers game, catch as many as you want with a crankbait or a jerkbait or a finesse rig. But is there a bait that you're not going to get as many bites on, but the quality will be better? That's the question. You know, you'd assume that would be the jig, the punch, maybe top water. The question would be when do we switch, when do we try other things, when do we know to mix it up in the right area. And if we can get that piece right, I'm assuming that'll get our best chance at a bigger fish. Well, what's interesting about this area is it's actually an area that's typically like crystal clear. So you can see the water's a little dirty. I mean, we could do the old rod trick, but I'm kind of curious just to see the depth, but also the composition. You guys know we didn't bring our graph, but we did bring a graph technically. Our portable graph. Kind of curious to see depth and bottom. Okay. 
Well, there's some grass down there. And you can see some of the patches sticking up. And there is some decent depth. Remember, this is in meters. So what, like four or five foot? Water temp, 13 degrees Celsius. And it's pretty chilly. Yeah, because this is actually the area O and I had that flurry at the end of the day. Last time we were out here, I mean, they were all small fish, but caught a bunch of small bass and striper. Hmm, we'll keep working through it. That is the thing with the Delta though. Areas change so fast. Those fish could be completely gone or just not in the mood to bite right now. We'll see. Try a little deeper. Not deeper, but more towards the kind of beaten bank for a while. Moved out a little bit, and once you know, we got bit. I'd be willing to guess. Jerk bait fish. That looks like a Florida strain, too. You know how those Florida strain get in the cold weather, but a jerk bait can usually trick them. All right, interesting. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of just going parallel to the bank. Decided, eh, let's move out a little further. It's not like there's some steep drop off. You know, it gets a little deeper, but so those fish easily could pull out, no problem. I don't know if that's a sign or what, but I think we got to go with it. Catching fish, I guess. You know, catching fish, getting bites. Yep, yeah, they're around. Little ones, at least. Seemingly, they just gotta slow down for them. I think a lot of these fish are just sitting in this grass right here. patch of fish here. Take a little patch of them. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I saw that one come right out of the grass and get that jerk bait. I don't even have my sunglasses on either. Put these babies on. Bet you we'll be able to see a lot more of these fish. Ah, oh, man. It's just hard to put down when you're getting bit. No matter what the bait, especially if it's a moving bait, reaction bait, it's hard to put down when you're getting bit. We are playing the numbers game today, but, whew, that's a tiny one. I just feel, though, any cast could be a better quality fish. And I will say, this time of year on the Delta, a jerk bait is what's caught some of the bigger fish for me. And it's been the same story, you know. Weed through a bunch of dinks. There are big ones there, I can promise you. better. There we go. A little better. Let's see, when we get the one, we're going to know because it's going to pull back real good. Upgrading. Maybe a keeper. Looks like he's a keeper. Oh yeah, there we go. There's a keeper. Finally. Not a big keeper, but... Well, <laughs> actually, I don't know. I said I went lightweight today, so I took everything out of the boat. Board and everything. That'd be real close. I almost want to say no. Probably be like 11 and 3 quarters. Oh, he felt like a keeper, though. Probably just because he had me in some grass. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm towards the middle. Yeah, they're everywhere. I guess. I know I'm gonna jinx it, but I'm just gonna say it right now. I cannot believe we haven't caught a striper yet. We rolled through here the other day with oh, like it seemed like I couldn't catch a bass. I was catching just striper after striper after striper, little ones. But you know how those fish are. They're one day gone the next. Seems better, but I can't tell. Huh? I just fell hooked. That's the benefit of sharp hooks. You're gonna stick them one place or another. How many fish do I gotta catch to get a decent one? What's up, man? What's going on, brother? Oh, man, just grinding away out here. You catching them? Catching anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, just dinks. I, ha I don't think I've caught a keeper yet. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, what you throwing, the cranky? Mm, I caught a couple on the crank, but everything lately has been on the jerk bait on the paws too. So you know it's slow when they're hitting it on the paws. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Any stripers? No, no stripers, man. I got no Doritos. That's <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was gonna say I should have bought some Doritos this morning. Oh, you know what? Um, while I got you on the phone, I mean the people's champ, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, I need some advice right now. So like I said, I've been catching lots of little ones on the jerk bait. I've been throwing the frog, I've been throwing top water, I've been throwing the jig, spinner bait, smaller blade bait even. What do I do? What do I do to catch a bigger fish, oh? Did you even bring a... Uh... Say again, you cut off. I said, did you bring a spinning rod or did you go no spinning rod again? No spinning rod. <laughs> I'll have Senkos. I could tie on a Senko on one of my casting rods. Like. Yeah, I, I wonder if a, like a five inch Senko Really? Will work and maybe even target out a little deeper. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah, you because know, like how we went out last time, you know, some of the fish are a little bit, a little out more on the flats or a little deeper. Yep. That could be, man, I think it's going to be like, I think you, like you said, that, that later in the day it might start picking up. You look at it, but I think it's target that fish, that bigger fish, that Cinco might come out to play. Let it, let it, let it sit. Let it soak. Okay. I think the slower, the slower the better. Yeah, man. I think you keep that up, something, something might happen. And if you do catch one, that's upper threes, four. You gotta call me back so I can uh, talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll call, I'll call you back if I catch a two. <laughs> I'll give it my all, man. I'll give it my all. All right, keep me posted. All right, man. I'll talk to you. All right, GV. All right. All right, you heard it. Keep going, cover water, jerk bait, crank bait, try a little deeper. What we will do is put a worm on because that's something I did not have tied on. Throw that for a little while. Man, I haven't thrown a worm or I should say a wacky worm since like the spring. Oh my god. Big fish of the day. Alright, well, I think I owe, owe a beer. Not a giant, but I think that's an actual keeper. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Sir being Obity. Man, when in doubt, call Obity Williams. I don't know if that was just luck or what, but let's keep going with it. <laughs> oh 
nobody. Well, the class of fish has gone up since we tied on the worm. Man, not the biggest fish, but they're getting better. It's amazing what a simple change will do. I saw him swimming off. Yeah. Getting bites, that's for sure. Getting bites. Whoa, look at this bass right here. Dude, you can't tell me that that fish right there wasn't born like a month ago. Meaning there's spawning fish out on the delta. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> oh my god, what a strange day. Maybe this was the mama. <laughs> All right, man. That was a weird sequence of events. Definitely having more confidence now that our bigger bite will come out of worm. Five pounder, I'm not even kidding you. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's the biggest fish I've hooked in a long time. Oh my god. I know it's not a tournament or anything, but that hurts so bad. That was a big fish. Man, I saw it too. Clear as day right there. I think it just had me on a toolie and it popped that hook out. Oh my god. I think the Senko is catching overall bigger fish. Clearly the one I lost. I know that sounds like a fish story, but I'm telling you guys, it was a big one. Not saying it was like a seven, eight pounder, but it looked like a five. It had a big old frame on him. got to give all credit today with the assist on all these fish <sighs> I have noticed though that these bites the Senko bites are on tulies that are a little deeper a big one we lost was on a deeper tule patch as well so maybe a little something Hit a good stretch. Yep, pretty sure we hit a good stretch. Not a giant, but we'll take those. Huh. Thought I felt a bite. Big one of the day right there. Nice solid one. Fat, look how fat that one is. Thank you, sir.
It is curious to think, you know, if I'd thrown crankbait or jerkbait in some of these areas, or any other bait for that matter, would I have gotten these fish to go? I don't know. Of course, it'd be harder to throw those baits in these areas because we're really just kind of throwing them around toolies, ambush points in a little deeper water and letting it sink. Seems like it needs to sink for a little bit before I get bit. The jerk bait would be the only other thing that would potentially put the bait in the strike zone. Might have to call O. JB! What's happening, man? <laughs> How's it going, brother? Well, I realize why they call you the king of the delta. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, we're, I'm catching them now. Catching better quality on the Senko, like you said. There we go. Yep. I did, you know, I know it sounds like a fish story, but I did probably lose one about five on it. Really? Yeah, and I've picked up a couple of twos on it now. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, around. I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate man. you, man. Oh, you already know, brother. Anything <laughs> I can do to help with fish and the boss and get fish on the board, I wouldn't be the ambassador. I know. Just uh, this is something I'd never do this time of year, like a wacky senko. Just. Oh man, that's one of my favorites right there. Well, I just wanted to call and say thank you, sir. Oh no problem, anytime. anytime. <laughs> you got like a hotline number that people can call if they need a little tip. One eight hundred rip some lips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it. All right, brother. All right, man. Later. <laughs> oh my God. Last one. Yeah, I know, right? How prepared am I? Obviously, I didn't think I'd be throwing a worm today. There we go. That's a good one. It's a fighter. Come here, buddy. Love it. Not a giant, but another solid. Oh no, got bad news. Got real bad news. Here's the bad news. This tattered up. This is our last. God, it's almost broken right now. I do have some mend it. Oh gosh. Ah, oh, yeah. We'll mend it. Let her dry. Uh. I mean, obviously, I didn't think I'd be throwing Senkos today, so I didn't bring any except the one little package. I think she's dry now. Just about dry. As long as I don't lose this worm, I'll keep mending it back together. <laughs> this is it. This is the last one we got. Man, you never... I feel like that always happens. You never have enough bait of the one bait you want. Of that color, of that... My drag's loose. Just don't lose my worm. <laughs> As I was saying, I'll be making an order of black and blue worms when I get home. Ooh, finally got a small one. God, that is torn up. That is really torn up. I just split it, but what we're gonna do is... Gotta let that dry in the sun. You should be. Alrighty. <laughs> I don't think I got much life left on this one. I got maybe one more fish on it. Or zero fish. Dang it. Alright, we're done with the Senko. Bummer. Alrighty guys, about 2.30, we're off the water. Kind of an interesting day out there as we uh, started off the video with, we had all of our baits, all nine rods, different baits that I thought maybe could work today given the conditions, given the time of year, etc. Early on, it didn't take long for us to get bit on the crankbait. Nothing big, but we got a few bites. After that, bites seemed to slow down, covered a lot of water. Again, trying different things, not set in stone and just crankbaiting and jerkbaiting. You know, we tried some top water, we tried a jig, we tried the spinnerbait, we even threw the frog a little 
bit, but our next flurry of bites happened to be on the jerk bait. And one thing that was pretty obvious was all those bites on the jerk bait were on the paws. And to me, that means these fish were a little finicky, a little hesitant to come up and bite, especially moving baits, faster moving baits, meaning the stuff we were already throwing. Yeah, did that program for a while. Through that jerk bait, was getting bites consistently. Again, nothing big, maybe a couple that may have touched 12 inches on the paws or really on the fall because that is a slow sinking jerk bait. Just kind of did that for a while and found myself wondering, you know, what do we do to get keeper bites? You know, I wasn't even looking for a big bite. I was looking for keeper bites. As luck would have it, got a call from the people's champ, AKA the ambassador of the Delta, Mr. Obedee Williams. Man, when you're on the Delta and the bite's tough, who better to talk to, right? So <laughs> asked oh, what he would have done in this situation. He gave me some helpful hints, some helpful tips. And one thing he said that I needed to do was throw a five inch Senko. We so happened to have some in the box. Not even actually sure why I brought them because I didn't think that I'd be throwing anything finesse because I didn't even have a finesse rod with us. However, we were able to make one of our medium heavy rods work. Yeah, I got off the phone with O, tied on that Senko, and it did not take long at all. It may have been the second cast actually we got there. And I believe that was probably the biggest fish of the day. So that was kind of a sign of things to come. We kept going with it, catching some fish here and there. Seemed to be better quality compared to the jerk bait. And again, everything on the fall. So just like the jerk bait, these fish were biting it on the fall. I think the reason the fish were a little bit better quality with the Senko was because I was able to pitch it closer to cover. And I think some of the better fish were closer to cover versus some of the fish out in the open and had some good bites. We did lose a big one. I know the old fish story, the one that got off. I got a good look at him. I think he just hung me up on a toolie because I saw the entire fish. Didn't even flash. Saw the entire fish and it just popped off. But that is fishing that happens sometimes and kept going with it. Conditions changed. Tide's starting to move and the bite it actually seemed better once we changed areas again. Started catching some keeper fish, which to me was a big upgrade from the fish we were catching earlier. Same deal, just throwing that sink out into the pockets next to cover, letting it sink. Again, it had to sink. You weren't just throwing this thing and getting bit. You had to let it go all the way to the bottom. And again, I think these fish were just setting up, seeing it come down, and they need it, just like they were the jerk bait. Nice little lesson for me today, and uh, if you guys come out here on the Delta, I guess my only word of advice would be, don't forget the worms. So <laughs> guys, that is going to do it for today's video. As always, I thank Thank you for watching, for coming along, and I will catch you guys in the next video.